passage. Turn with me in your Bibles to uh, Proverbs chapter 1. This is week two of our family series. Next week, we're going to talk about being an empty nester. That's something a, a number of us have gone through and how to thrive through that transition uh, as well. Proverbs chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for attaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair, for giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Listen, my son and daughter, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, um, I'm going to try to bridge a divide today, a divide of years. As I talk to the teenagers and we kind of together think about and meditate upon what it means to be a young person in Christ. Now, Father, I know that it's been a long time since I've been a teenager, and I've worked this morning to try to bring something relevant that reaches all of us, really. But I ask that you would open each of our hearts, that each of us would benefit from this message. In Christ's name, amen. I really kind of worked hard to figure out how to present this in a way that would reach everyone today, but would also really speak to our youth um, and those who are soon to be youth. I'm really so pleased to see that our youth, they sit up front and they do listen to the things that we say on Sunday mornings because from time to time they've quoted things back to me. And I find that very gratifying and it's, it's, it's really a wonderful thing. So thank you guys and gals. Thank you for listening. But I thought this morning a little bit about uh, some, some setups I could have done up on here on the stage to reach the youth. I, I thought about the people who really shape our lives through media, whether it be online, on the telephone, or on the TV. How do the most influential people in your life how do they reach you? And I thought, okay, I could ask you to put on a pair of headphones and listen to me through some ear candy telephones, uh, headphones. I could, uh, I could appear to you on the, I could just kind of play something on my phone and ask you guys to watch it. I could have cleared the whole stage this morning and set up a couple really cool armchairs, right? I could have dressed casually, surrounded myself with beautiful people, and told you what you should believe. And you'd say, bravo, to me. I could have... <laughs> hold on, hold on to that thought. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. I'm trying to figure out how to say it in a relevant, in a relevant way. Uh, I'm going to come straight at you this morning. I'm going to, I'm going to preach to you this morning. And you might say, well, you know, preaching to us is something that's kind of, it's kind of old-fashioned. Well, the first thing we learn in the book of Proverbs is that older people just can't help but tell you how you should live your life. They really can't. Solomon wanted to pass on wisdom to the young men and women. He had a view of life that he knew to be true because it had been given to him by the Lord. You know the story about Solomon, right? Solomon was probably the second greatest king in the whole history of Israel. And as he was ascending to his kingship, 
he asked the Lord, he said, said, Lord, give me wisdom. Because the Lord had come to him in a dream and said, I will give you anything you want to help rule my people. And what Solomon said was, I want wisdom. And the Lord was really touched and impressed. He didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for power. He didn't ask for victory over his enemies. He asked for wisdom to make the kind of decisions that he knew that he would have to make. And so here in this book of Proverbs are some of the things that Solomon had learned that he wanted to pass on to those who are just getting started in the world who are still trying to figure out the world and God. So how can I best present these to you guys and you gals? Well, I could get a little dude with a camera to follow me around. And yet, also be, he would be in the shot as well. I could, I could post some really hysterical, name-calling Facebook posts. That would make an impact, right? Uh, I, could, I could help you with this little dude Follow me. I could help you try to figure out who you're supposed to date and find out if your online date is really who you think she or he is. Like catfish, right? Yeah, you, you do have to be 18. What is there, a technology demon here today or something? This is, this is tough. This is a tough day. So I could do things like that to kind of reach you, and you say, well, that might be more interesting than preaching, but I want to tell you, they are preaching at you every day. These people are telling you what you should believe, how you should think, what's important, and what your attitude should be every single day, whether it's online or on television or whether it's on your phone or wherever it may be. They are trying to tell you how you should live your life. So if you can walk away with one thing today, that would be filter everything you hear through the Word of God. Filter everything that we hear through the Word of God. Because those voices and those images and those sounds are coming at us so fast, constantly, and they don't give up. People in the world will not give up preaching to us. So it's important that we filter what we hear through the Word of God. And a good place to turn to is the book of Proverbs. See, there are people in your life who don't want you for the clicks that you can click on your phone. They don't want you for the dollars that you can spend on their products. They don't, they're not after you because they, they need a fan base to follow them. There are people in your life like parents, people in this church, your pastors, your mentors, and your teachers who really care about you as people and what you'll become. There are people in your life who have gained wisdom through hard work, through mistakes. And I mentioned that earlier with Nick and Jamie because mistakes have been some of the best teachers in my life. And Tona was telling me that as well beforehand this morning in my office before I baptized her. That mistakes are some of the most powerful methods that God uses to teach us. Verse 6 tells us that life is a riddle. And Solomon indicates that he wrote these Proverbs in order to unlock the Proverbs, the parables, and the sayings, and the riddles of life. Life is a riddle. It is a mystery. Life often needs to be unlocked. And you unlock a lot of life simply by living it and taking it to the Lord. But there are also people in our lives who have keys that if we'll take them up, they will open up doors for us and help us go to the next level. Wouldn't it be great if some of the people with keys here in this church or in your life or at your school, some of the people who had keys to life would hand you one of these keys that would unlock blessings for your life? Well, there are people all around you who have those keys. 
Recently, I was watching a guy play an online game. Huge screen. The graphics were incredible. The action was intense. The sound seemed to kind of surround me. And I'm not a gamer, but I know enough to understand that at some levels in the games, in order to open a door, you need a key. You need a password. You need to conquer something. You need a spell or something to open that next door and to move you to the next level. And what Solomon is saying here in the Proverbs is that life is the ultimate gaming experience. No one in a video game wants to stay at the same level or to languish or just kind of sit there. Every gamer wants to move on to explore new worlds, fight greater battles, and reach the prize. It's a picture, really, of life. Listening to the wisdom of those who've gone before you or the ultimate in ancient scrolls, in ancient books of wisdom, listening to these sources of wisdom are the key for us as we grow in life. A lot of Christians, by the way, read a proverb a day because there's 31 proverbs and there's usually about 30 or 31 days in a month. It's a great habit to get into and I even checked out there's, a, there's an app for that as well. It's called Proverb a Day. And it's from the way of the cross. It's an organization. And you can download it for free. And they deliver you a, a proverb every day that you can look at on your phone. There's something else I'd like to touch on in this in this little passage of Scripture we read. Look at verse 8. Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They will be a garland to grace your head and a chain to adore you to adorn your neck. Now, I'm not a big fan of these phone apps where you can take a photo of somebody and you can add, like, flowers and squirrels and you can distort the face or add a pig nose or big ears or something like that. And to me, my daughter, you know, she likes to take pictures of us and, and put it on there and then distort us. And I'm like, honey... You don't have to distort this face to be funny. Come on. You know, I'm not a big fan of that, but I do like the, the flowers that some ladies, some women put in their hair on these pictures. I think it, it, it's kind of pretty. Um, they encircle the head, and that's called a garland. And sometimes in real life, women wear flowers in their hair as well. But you can picture a garland. And what Solomon is saying here is that your father's instruction, your mother's teaching, will be like a garland to grace your head. Now, parents are not infallible. They make mistakes. Sometimes parents say stupid things. You say more stupid things, but sometimes parents say stupid things. Let's admit it. We do. We make mistakes. So you got to kind of see what applies to you. But this wisdom that people want to hand to you, these keys of knowledge, they have come at a cost of many years, sweat, blood, mistakes, working hard to gain wisdom. And they want to pass that on to you. And by the way, someday you'll get to do that as well. Someday, sooner than you think, too, you'll be able to pass on wisdom to others. Someday, Bud Carter is going to be, Bud and Carter are going to be the wise old guys of our church. God help us. This is, this is, someday they will. Someday Kyle will be back there dispensing wisdom like Bob Jordan does on the bench back there before the service. Yeah. All these guys and gals, someday you're going to be the elders, elders of the church. And you'll have your time. And then you'll say things like, well, when I was a kid. <laughs> Today we wear hats instead of garlands. But the idea is the same. On a woman... 
listening and wisdom and acting in a, in a good and godly way is beautiful. What the Proverbs tell, tells us is that our parents pass down wisdom to us. And as we listen to our parents and those who love us, our pastors, our teachers, our lives will blossom and the things we accomplish, the people we touch, the people that we become will become a beautiful crown of glory. Now, if you're a guy, you're not into the whole garland thing. And that's why Solomon puts in the gold chain. Hanging around the neck. You know, these guys, these rappers, they have nothing on what God can give us. And for those of you who were alive in the 70s, I immediately went to, you remember that famous Mark Spitz photo with the seven gold medals that he won in the Olympics? I didn't want to put that on the screen because it's just, you know, it's just too sexy. But it was an awesome visual image, imagination uh, that I had. And, and it was just a beautiful picture. This guy, he was a swimmer, and he won seven gold medals, kind of like Phelps, right? He was before Phelps, and he won seven medals, and he had this picture with them all hung around his neck, and they were awesome. That's what God has for you. That's what God has for you. The world may never see it, but you'll see it. You'll know it. The people around you will see it, and they will know it. And those gold medals, those things come to us through people in our lives. When I was a teenager, a young adult, I wasn't a Christian. I thought I was, but I wasn't. When I really met Jesus, I understood but when I was younger, I did some things that I wish now I had not done. At the time, I didn't see it as rebellion against God, though. I saw it as rebellion against the authority figures in my life. And I was always kind of pushing to see how much I could get away with. It was a game for me. Now, what I've realized since then is part of being young is pushing the envelope a little bit. But my rebellion against authority and my pushing of the envelope actually was rebellion against God. Because he had put some really good people in my life that I was ignoring. My prayer for our young adults, for our teens, during the drama years is that you'll be able to sort through the many voices that are trying to reach you trying to reach your heart. And you'll listen as well to people in our lives who can add value and significance to your life. I hope that you filter all that comes at you on your TV, on the, on the phone, in school, through the Word of God. And you strengthen this Word of God filter by spending time each day in the Word of God. Maybe through an app, Maybe opening up an old-fashioned Bible, a book. Maybe listening to something that's Scripture-related. That your filter will grow stronger and more effective over the years. I look forward to seeing the garlands of beauty and the golden chains of wisdom around the necks, around the heads of our young people. I think it's always fashionable. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I don't remember much of what my pastor said when I was a kid. Sometimes I can't even remember what I preached last week or the week before. But what I did catch from those around me, including my pastor and teachers was their concern and their love for me. And I ask, Father, that all of us in our church would be men and women who show love to the young and to the younger, that they would know that we care and we believe in them and we can be used by God in their lives. Father, 
as the years roll on. Our hope is in you who are the beginning and the end. The one who has no beginning and no end. The ancient of days who is the author of history. Our faith is in you and that Christianity, which is always one generation away from extinction, that in Portsmouth, Virginia, at West Haven Baptist Church, in our state of Virginia, in our nation, in our world, that the body of Christ will grow and thrive and be powerful in prayer and in the Spirit. Put in each of us a desire to go to the next level, to get the key, to open the door, to defeat the demons, and to move up and onward. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.